Let's having a look at a PC24 here, Pilatus 24. Yes. Yes, uh, it's a first private jet that's certified to land on grass and dirt strips. Look at this cargo door. I think that's one of its major selling points, similar to the PC12. You can pull a forklift right up to there with a pallet and get it in. I think it's a very practical looking aircraft and I'll have a look inside in a second. So a couple of things to note about this aircraft. Um, they, when they designed this, uh, because of the success of the pc 12 cargo door, they uh, basically started with the cargo door and then worked their way from there. So they, they realized that they had to have the engine behind the cargo door, but they also realized that they had to have a fairly straight wing so that they can bring forklifts and things up to it. So the wing is straight at the back here. You'll see that it's slightly swept in the front. So they needed to be able to access that, but because the engine is not so, with, with swept wing aircraft like Challengers and other aircraft, the, um, the engine is a little bit closer to the wing, so that causes a bit of center of gravity issues uh, for them, but they've overcome that. And then I've come to learn as well that um, the reason why it's able to uh, land on unimproved surfaces like grass and gravel and things is uh, those double bogey landing gear, they actually, you can, you can push onto them, they, they're so soft. Um, 60 to 70 something like that uh, psi i think the guy said i can't remember exactly but they, they're very soft so they're very forgiving and during the testing phases they had a uh, some uh, stones going up and hitting the belly so they've designed that uh, sort of guard there to stop that from happening really cool lights on it uh, the engines itself um, they don't have reverse thrust because of the, um, the ability of the aircraft to land um, on, uh, on unimproved uh, soft surfaces. I say soft, but you know what I mean? Not uh, hard tarmac surfaces. Um, and another interesting point about the right engine, the right engine actually serves as an APU as well. So they, they effectively start the engine and then they go into a QPM mode, which is a quiet power mode, which drops the decibels. The engine actually runs at a much lower uh, N1 and um, that then serves as an APU while they're waiting for passengers so a lot of times they actually get told by ramp agents and other people that do you, are you aware that you got your right engine running but uh, the truth is they, they keep having to tell them that no it's uh, it's the APU so the right engine serves as the APU a further back but there's a button there because yeah, it's down. way too high to operate yeah, Right. Tell you what, that makes loading bicycles, yeah. skis, and all sorts of things a lot easier than uh, normal. Another thing that I didn't mention earlier, another reason why I can land on soft surfaces is because these flaps go down to 33 degrees, double slotted Fowler flaps that prevent any FOD from going up into the engines as well. This is my first time stepping onto the aircraft, so you're looking at it for the first time with me. First thing I see there is that sink. The old uh, Honeywell Apex avionics, very simple by the looks of it. Looks like if you fly a PC-12, you'll be able to jump into this and get on with it. And then let's look at the back. A fantastic uh, cabin. It looks like, uh, yeah, it's really nice leather. I know that the PC-12s also have very well designed by BMW interiors. You can always tell that it's high quality Swiss Swiss engineering, which is often over engineering, but I guess in an aircraft you'd rather have it that way. I've also just noticed how the front part is actually hard flooring there. It's not something I'm used to, that's pretty nice. Hard flooring there for the galleon entrance and then carpet throughout the rest. Let's have a look and see what's in the back here. Ah, you can access your luggage during the flight, like you can in other jets. I'm quite curious why that space is not utilized better. I'll ask them that, but uh, I'll have a look at that in a second. Obviously there's storage in there. And perhaps you can have seats uh, in different configurations, I would imagine. So I've just learned, I've just learned why this uh, galley looks so unusual. I'm sitting here in the captain's seat and look what happens. Right behind uh, the cockpit, you have a suction uh, toilet. And you have right there. These guys that Those do guys that. come up for privacy. That do that. And another door here. 
I've never seen a jet where the toilet is uh, on this side of the uh, of the uh, cabin. It's very, very interesting. It, it is, I've just described it as a spaceship. Yeah, it's spaceship like, yeah, yeah. compared to uh, some Compared seven. to what I'm used to, yeah. 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 Well, although we've not, we've got the um, glass, glass in now, but mm. still, it's not. Is it the big glass or the little glass? Because we had a little glass when I flew them. Just had some round eyes. Oh, no, no, yeah. Well, I, when I started, it was the little glass, yeah. It was mm. the, the old, but now we've got... And then I'm watching on the screen and says, oh, look, it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's having a hot start, right? And you're just saying, oh, look, look, now it's, now it's uh, taking the fuel out. Now it's doing its cooling cycle. <laughs> and it, it didn't do anything. And that is an event. Um, yeah. We've got to do... <laughs> it's, yeah. like, uh, it's clever. I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah. a feature, I guess. No, it is. It's, uh, yeah. Beautiful I've seen airplane. it do that a couple of times when they've had the engine off or they've 